Well, welcome back. If you're just joining us in this group this week, uh, we're pursuing together how we can make a greater difference with the rest of our life than we've made up until now. It's called, really, ultimately, a, a life that matters. That great desire we all have for a life of greater significance and greater impact that will leave a legacy that will really last. As you begin to think about the significance of your life in terms of its impact on other people, let's think about the Titanic for a minute. My goodness, we sure know a lot about it, don't we? After the movie and a Broadway play and all kinds of TV documentaries. And you may remember, with 2,200 passengers aboard the Titanic, only 700 survived. 1,500 died that awful night when the Titanic went down. Now, you know that there were 20 lifeboats. Not enough lifeboats, but they loaded them very quickly because the ship went down in two hours. And they were loaded so quickly that many of them were still half empty. A lot of people didn't get in a lifeboat that night. But when the ship went down, they did get in a life jacket. Now, I've actually been to the Titanic Artifacts exhibit. I heard a recording of the story of a survivor of the sinking that night. And he said, after the ship went down, the sea was like glass. It looked like there'd never been a ship there. He said, there was no moon that night, but it seemed like every star was out. But he said, the sound I'll never forget as we were in the lifeboat, and none of us has been able to forget, is the cries of the people in the water. Help me, help me. Incredibly, History tells us that the people in the lifeboat never turned back for those folks. Three days later, the funeral ships came from Nova Scotia, and they came upon this ghastly scene. There were 328 people floating in their life jackets, frozen to death. You know why they died? Not because the Titanic sank. They survived that. They died because the people who were already saved did nothing about the people who were dying all around them. And I think of that and I think, dear God, is that us? We are already in the lifeboat because somebody rescued us. Somebody introduced us to Jesus Christ and in so doing helped change our eternity from hell to heaven. And now we're safe in the lifeboat. Are we just enjoying the fellowship of the people who are already saved? Singing our lifeboat songs and going to our lifeboat committee meetings and building a bigger and more comfortable lifeboat for the people who are already in, when we're surrounded every day by people who are dying spiritually. And we are, humanly speaking, their only hope of rescue. I believe that there are some people in the room right now who are ready to turn that lifeboat around and say, I want to help pull as many people I care about into that boat as I can with the life that I have left. I don't know how much life I've got left, but I want to use it to help people be in heaven with me. The Bible actually puts our spiritual assignment in the words of rescue. It says in Proverbs 24, 11, rescue those who are being led away to death and hold back those who are staggering towards slaughter. It makes such an incredible difference when you begin to look at the people you go to work with and you live across the street from and you golf with or hunt with or go to school with or play sports with, even members of your family, and you can see them through Jesus' eyes. We'll be looking together at some of the words that the Bible uses to describe the people around us who do not have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Words like lost, perishing, without hope and without God in this world. And then the awful words of 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 and verse 8, they will be separated from the presence of the Lord forever. Now that's people we know. That's people we see sometimes every day. Part of our life, part of our world. And God has given you a title that perhaps is the most important title you'll ever hold and the most important position any human being could ever have. If you're talking about a life that matters, you need to understand the title God has given you. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20 says this, We are Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. And then he goes on to say, I implore you in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God. 
We are Christ's ambassadors. What's an ambassador? Well, let's think what we know about ambassadors. The President of the United States, for example, appoints someone to be his ambassador to China. The highest authority there is appoints this person to represent him in a specific place. What's an ambassador for Christ? It's someone who's appointed by the highest authority in the universe to represent him in a specific location. It could be the school you attend. It could be Acme Tool and Die. <laughs> it could be the neighborhood you live in, the condos, the apartment complex. As his personal ambassador, you are their link to Jesus. You're their chance at Jesus. You are, in a very real sense, their chance at heaven. As my father-in-law got older, he did what a lot of elderly people do. He told stories about his life and told the stories and told the stories and told them over and over again. And there's one I remember very well. He said when he was a boy, he saw a girl drown. He had no idea what to do to rescue her. But he said, I made up my mind that day that that would never happen again without me knowing how to save someone who was drowning. Well, he did learn how. And in his lifetime, he saved four drowning people, including his own pastor, who was caught in a whirlpool in a local river. This is a man who said, I will not let them die again in front of me without knowing how to rescue them. That's what these weeks are about, learning how to rescue them. So we're going to spend the next few minutes looking at the most important assignment you'll ever have. In fact, the most important thing you will probably ever do in your life. Now, thanks again for being a part of this, and I hope you have a great visit together, and I'll see you in a few minutes. Well, it's exciting to spend a few minutes together discussing really the significant assignment God has trusted to you, isn't it? You begin to see the eternal importance of what you do every day and who you're with every day and what a difference you could make in their eternity. There was a scene I was thinking of in the movie Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace was a story of William Wilberforce, who as one man fought a 20-year battle to end slavery in the British Empire, and uh, uh, he finally won that battle. One of the ways he did that was he had to help the people in Parliament begin to understand what was really happening to people when they were taken on British ships to the Caribbean, to British islands, and made slaves there. Some of the people in Parliament thought that they were doing better, they were having a better life. So in the movie, William Wilberforce arranges a little cruise for some parliamentarians out in the harbor. And as they come back, they're all nicely dressed and they're being served all these delicacies and snacks uh, by waist-coated waiters and they're all enjoying themselves, laughing. And suddenly they begin to cover their noses with their handkerchiefs going, what is that smell? Well, they have come up alongside a ship called the Madagascar. And suddenly, William Wilberforce appears on the deck of the Madagascar. And he says, uncover your noses. This is a slave ship. It left Africa for the islands with 600 passengers. 200 made it. 400 died. What you are smelling is the stench of death. So uncover your noses and never forget this smell. William Wilberforce began to turn the hearts of those people by insisting that they not be able to forget the consequences of their failure to act. God does not want you and me to forget the consequences of our failure to act, to deliver the life-saving good news about his Son upon which eternities depend. In light of that significant trust from God, I want to ask you to pray a prayer for this next week, every new day. Would you pray this? It's a dangerous prayer, in a sense, because it's life-changing. Go ahead, God, and break my heart. 
break my heart for the people I work with, live near, see all the time, I go to school with. Dear Lord, help me see what you see. People who, without an intervention by a rescuer, are the future inhabitants of hell. Help me see them. Help me love them. Help me care about them as you do. Would you pray that for these next days ahead? When we come back together, it'll be important for us to share a little bit of what has happened. As for at least a few days of our life, we have asked God to show us the people around us through his eyes. They are people outside the lifeboat. And it's up to us to pull them in. God bless you. I'll see you next time. Thank you.